Okay, thank you, Joyce. Okay. Hello, everyone. Very good afternoon. Thank you very much to join my presentation today. My name is Tianjin. I will work with you together for the next one hours. As you can see from the presentation title, in this talk, I will share with you these two very interesting topics, explainable AI and AI ethics. Before we talk more details, let me just have one slide to talk a few words about myself. Okay. I'm currently working in the artificial intelligence practice in NUS ISS. So inside the ISS, I'm managing the graduate certificate in intelligent sensing systems. So for myself, I'm specialized in computer visions and video analytics. So basically, I'm interested in analyzing the image and the video data which are captured by our smartphone cameras or public surveillance cameras. It can be applied in many different applications. Okay. So for example, we can deploy the AI system to analyze the CCTV video footage to detect humans and count the humans. If this amount exceeds certain limit, the AI system will trigger you alert. So inside this shopping mall, there are already too many customers in, in this shopping mall then the AI system will suggest you stop admin more customers to enter in shopping mall. So if this case happens, so will you trust the AI system output? Okay. To answer these questions, you need to explain the AI system decisions so that you can trust, you can decide whether you trust the AI system recommendations so you can take some actions. So on the other hand, in Singapore, we have many different race of peoples. We are different race, we are different genders. So all of us has our own favorite clothes style. We can wear different t-shirt and different jacket. So how you can ensure the AI systems provide the fair detections to detect all the different kinds of people who are wearing different types of t-shirt and clothes? To answer these questions, we need to study the AI ethics issues. So which will be taught in my second part of the talk. Okay. So now let's start with the first part. Okay. So in the first part, we'll talk about the explainable AI. The short form is XAI. So the X stands for explainable. Okay. So for this part, I will try to address these three key questions. So in my presentations. Okay. First one, why do we need XAI? So without the help of XAI, what will happen? So if the, your current AI system give you some recommendations, so we will trust them how to explain how the decisions are made in their existing AI systems. The second question is, so what is XAI? So in my talk, I will give you a clear and short formulations to tell you what's the definitions of XAI, what will be the key tasks and functionalities that can be provided by the XAI. The last question, we will talk about more technical details. We will address how to do XAI. So after you are convinced the usage and the benefit of XAI, we still need to talk about how to do the XAI. So basically in my talk, I will share with you a pipeline. So I will hold your hands, so just follow my pipeline. You can study for these AI systems, how to address the XAI topics on these existing AI systems. So this will be the three questions I try to cover in my first part of presentations. Okay. So let's look at AI first. Okay. So the artificial intelligence is an essential component in our modern lives. We already see many successful applications of AI systems in different industry domains, such as finance, retails, securities, and healthcare, which are shown in my current slides. For example, in the finance sectors. Okay. So we can deploy the AI systems to provide intelligent investment recommendations. So the AI system can suggest us uh, we need to uh, purchase or sell certain stock product. Also, we can deploy the AI system to monitor our financial transactions, such as the credit card payment. So we can differentiate whether it's a reliable credit card payment or it could be some suspicious credit card payment. Okay. Second, in the retail sectors, we can deploy the AI system to do the product recommendations to suggest the users to purchase more product based on your interest. For example, 
if you look at the leading e-commerce APBs, such as those uh, Lazada, Shopbase, every time after you search certain product inside the APB, you will realize the first page of the APB, they actually change the displayed product photos. They also change the orders to display what be the first and favorite product they recommend you to purchase. The reason is they actually deploy the AI system to adaptively do this adjustment based on your search histories, based on your customer profiles, including your income and your past searching histories. Okay. So these are some examples of what, what we can do in the retail sectors. Okay. So next in the security sectors, we can see many AI systems can help us to do the security and the surveillance. For example, I just do the cameras to look at whether you wear official marks properly or not. Then we also can monitor the social distance to make sure each customer stand at least one meter apart away other customers when you queue to buy your, your field rifle in the hawker centers. Okay. Lastly, in the healthcare domains, we can do the AI system to assist the doctors to make the decisions. Here, I use the word assist. I don't use words automate because I want to, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, replace the human and the doctor system fully by the AI system. So actually to me, the AI system can assist the doctors to make some decisions using certain uh, healthcare sensory data such as X3 image, ultrasound image, CT image, or some EEG sensor data. We also can apply the AI to do the forecasting based on the historical confirmed COVID-19 case, we can do the forecasting. So what be these numbers in next weeks or in next months? Then based on these predictions, we can adjust our regulations adaptively. So whether we need to further tighten our regulations or we can release some regulation rules. Okay. So these are a few examples, successful examples of applying the AI system in different industry sectors. If you look at the existing AI systems, we can realize actually the machine learning is the core technologies to develop and achieve such AI systems. However, the machine learning models are usually they are non-intuitive and very difficult for the human to understand, particularly when the human has the limited knowledge in the computer science or some machine learning or math statistics. However, all these AI systems need to be provided decision to the users. If the users has a difficult to understand AI decisions, so they might not trust the AI system decisions. So due to these difficulties to explain the AI, usually we treat this AI system as a so-called black box AI system. Black box, that means you purchase a bottle of drink, it tastes good, it's very healthy, but you don't know what's inside. It could be bubble tea, could be green tea, could be plain waters. Actually, you had no idea what's inside. So you just treat it as a black box. Okay. So the black box AI will create some challenge to adapt, uh, to uh, deploy such AI system. So first, the black box AI can create confusions for the industry's applications for different types of the users. Okay. I think today, all of us playing a different role in our uh, organizations. So depending on the roles of the users, the AI system might cause some uh, confusions. For example, if you are the business owners, if the AI system suggests you purchase this the stock price, so will you trust the AI decisions? Okay. Will you believe this is the purchase will give you more revenue and more profit? Okay. If you are the developers of the AI systems, like me, you, you design and build the AI systems, to study a lot of data or different product in the retail sectors. How can you figure out which data and which feature or attribute of data will contribute more to affect the AI system decisions? With such understanding, we can hope to select those important attributes from the product, such as the functionalities, manufacturer supply names, we can hope to build some better machine learning systems with more accurate prediction result. Okay. If you are the regulators in the government agencies, how can you make sure the AI system is fair for different gender, different peoples? 
you know, I, I, as I mentioned before, so different race of people, they might have a different style to wear the t-shirts. Okay. Lastly, if you are the customer support, particularly in the healthcare domains, you need to interact with the patient. If these patients go to your clinic, do this AI test, the system tells the patients he has very high risk to get certain cancers, but certainly the, usually the patient, they may not believe it, right? Then for this case, how you can understand the AI system to explain this decision to the patients so it can convince the patients so you can take some medical treatment or you can address the customer complaints. So in addition, the black box AI will create a business risks for different industries, as we can see from the newspapers. For example, in Amazon, they already realized when the AI do the automatic recruitment to match the application CV with the job descriptions, there may be some women has some bias. That means if you are the woman applications, you know, you might have a lower chance to apply certain jobs. This is due to the AI system the bias. Okay. The second, according to this uh, New York Times news, the facial recognition systems, if you are the certain racial or genders, such as a white and a guy, then maybe the facial recognition system might have a better accuracy. This might due to the bias when you collect the data to train such facial recognition systems. Then in the autonomous driving industries, there might be some incident happens. For such thing happens, how you can trust the AI system output. So you can see from these two slides, to reduce the confusions of deploying the AI in the AI system in different industries and further reduce the business risk. So what do we need? The answer is we need explainable AI. Okay. So in these slides, I give you these are very clear definitions of the explainable AI. So according to these definitions, okay. So the XAI is essential for the users to understand, trust, and effectively managing the AI applications. And more specifically, XEI can help us to do the following four key tasks. Okay, first one, explanations. So the XEI will help us to provide both AI decisions and the evidence and justifications why these systems do these recommendations instead of just providing a decision only, such as purchase or sale. At the same time, the XCI will help us why I need to purchase this store product, store product. Okay. Second, meaningful. That means the XCI will try to provide explanations which can be understood by the different users. Even you are the non-domain expert in the industry or you are the non-machine learning expert to understand the mess. So the explanations I hope the explanation can be understood by the non-expert users. Next, explanation accuracy certainly is a required, right? So I need to correctly explain the AI system decisions. I cannot make the wrong explanations, right? Lastly, knowledge limit. So the XAI will help us to understand what is the suitable conditions to trust the AI systems. For example, if you use the video surveillance examples, so if the AI system are designed to require certain lighting conditions to detect humans, if you deploy such systems in a midnight, that means the lighting is not sufficient, the image is too dark, then in this case, the AI system output might not be reliable. So the XI can clearly tell you what is the limit and uh, to deploy such systems and how to make sure how to achieve certain, uh, certain conditions to have sufficient confidence for this. Okay. So this is the four key tasks can be achieved by XEI. So due to these functionalities, so XEI can benefit all of us in different roles of users, as you can see in my, in my current slides. You know. So I suggest all of you just look at the slides to check what is your role in your organizations. Then you can take a look how you can get benefit from XEI on top of your existing AI systems. Okay. So, so let me quickly go through this as a uh, clockwise directions. Okay. 
So first, if you are the domain expert, a domain expert, you are the inference agent, you deploy the AI system, they tell you, suggest you purchase the inference product. Okay. Then with the help of the XCI, you can trust the AI decisions. Then you also can gain further scientific knowledge. For example, if the AI system always suggests you purchase a certain a group of inference product, you might need to ask, hey, why? Why is this a group of the uh, inference product? Why is they are so attractive? Why the AI system suggests me to buy? Then after that, you may study, oh, inside this uh, inference product, what it be key features and key benefit to attract the users to purchase. You can get more scientific knowledge. Okay. Next, if you have the regulations, you know, you are government, government agency, you do the policy regulations, you can make sure the AI system has some compliance with certain regulations. For example, in a social distance monitors, Right, so the AI system monitor is one meter, is really a one meter in a physical distance. It's not the estimate, the numbers or distance from the image data, which define in terms of the pixel. Now, these are two very different concepts to measure the distance. One is a physical distance in one meter, another one is a digital distance, such as two pixels, 10 pixels. Okay. Next, if you are the business owners, you rely on the AI system to to do the product recommendations and adjust your promotion plans. Then with this XCI, it can help you to understand how this the AI system makes these uh, decisions. Because all your business revenue rely on this uh, promotion plan divided by the AI systems. Okay. Next, data scientists, right? So I'm, uh, we, to, in order to build a better machine learning models, we need to understand what is the uh, uh, key input data and attribute I can do some selections. I only can select those important features so that I can have a better and more accurate machine learning models. Okay. And lastly, for the users who are affected by the AI decisions, such as patients to do the cancer test, such as individual loan applications, you submit a loan request to the bank. Then with the help of XCI, you can understand whether your loan application has higher chance to approve or has some lower chance. If it is rejected, what you need to do? So that for the next application, you, have, you, you can increase the chance to get approved. Okay. So this is just summary to show you the XCI can benefit different types of the tagging audience. Okay. Then next you can ask, I think it's very useful. You know, it's very, it's good, very good, very useful. Then how to do the XCI for the, my existing AI systems? Okay. Okay. So before that, let me summarize the key difference between the traditional black box AI in the top figure in my slides and the XCI, experimental AI, which in my bottom figures. Okay. You can see from my slides, the black box AI start with the data, treat the AI decision at the black box, only provide the decision and recommendation to the users. Then the, user, then the users usually have this question, hey, why do you do that? Why do you not do that, right? How to succeed a few for your certain data records. But in the contrast, the experimental AI will treat and transform this black box to be white box or even transparent box. So we can clearly to see how the decisions they are made at the same time, after I understand the decision, I can provide feedback. So I can change my machine learning models. So you can see this consistent with my earlier definitions to trust, understand, and effectively manage the AI system. This is some key benefit of XCI. Okay. So now we talk about how to do the XCI. Okay. So the AI is very broad topics. It's very broad. There are many different types of AI systems, many different types of AI systems. Okay. So I can summarize existing the AI systems in the following chart according to two aspects. One is model interpretabilities from left to the right. That means the left method, they are very low explanations. They are very difficult to explain. At the right side, the model interpretabilities is very high. That means it's easier to understand and, and, and explain the AI system to the users. The second aspect would be model accuracy from bottom to the top. Okay. So for the bottom method, usually they had low accuracies to address the AI task. For the top method, they usually they have very high accuracy, such as some neural networks or some deep learnings. 
For example, if you look at the bottom right, okay, bottom right, which is root based learning, if you use the use case of the loan applications as example to explain such AI systems, I will just look at the income and the loan request amount. If your income is larger than certain values, if your loan request is smaller than certain values, I can improve, right? So it's so called a rule based learning. After that, I can make it more complicated to look at a linear regression. I can build some regression model. The regression model will do the predictions between your input income and the input loan request amount to predict the risk. What is the risk for me to approve a loan? I can make it further complicated to look at the decision tree. Then for this tree, they can tell us, although you tell me the income and the low request, I actually the AI system will look at more at the income. So that means the income is more important than the other attribute. Then lastly, you can look at the new networks. Usually the new networks, particularly some deep learning neural networks, they can provide a more accurate, you know, uh, more accurate model performance. Okay. So this is the overview for the existing AI, but with the help of the XAI, Actually, the XAI can push all the method towards the right side. That means help us to explain and understand the AI system. At the same time, with such understandings, I hope I can push all the method to the top directions. That means I can build a better and more accurate models. Okay. So the, that will be shown in my right figures. Compare the, these two figures shown at my slides. It's very clear to see the green zone, the green zones will be the benefit which can be introduced by XEI. So basically the XEI will push all the methods towards the right or towards the top. Certainly this benefit might be different for different methods. For example, for the rule base, you can see for the rule base because it's already very clear to explain. Right? So that may, may not be too much benefit to improve the model interpretabilities, but I can increase the model accuracy. However, for the deep learning, you see the deep learning, because deep learning is really very difficult to explain. So with the help of XI, I can push this method to the, to the top and the right to explain the model interpretabilities and the improve the model accuracies. So in summary, this is the benefit, the green zones showing my current slides how to further add on the XEI to your existing AI systems. Okay. So next, let me talk about more technical details, how to do the XEI, because so far it sounds very good, right? XEI is very good, very useful, can benefit many different peoples, can benefit different AI techniques, but how do XEI, right? So in the next few slides, let me share a little bit more technical details Okay. Basically, I will share with you the pipeline which can show in my uh, in my green green regions in my slides. So I will hold your hands to follow this pipeline. You just use this pipeline to look at your existing AI system in your own organizations. Okay. So just follow this pipeline to to take a look how to add an XI. Okay. In order to add on the XI for the existing AI systems, the first questions you need to ask yourself is whether you want to explain the model decisions or whether you want to explain the model internal process. That means how the decision is made. So the question, what you want to explain? Ex explain the decision, that means purchase or sell. Or explain how the decision is made, that means show what happens inside the black box AI, how the decision is made. Suppose my current focus is I want to explain the internal process. That means how the decision is made from current AI systems. For the model decisions I'll explain in the next few slides. So let's look at internal process first. Okay. So that's my current focus, explain how the AI decision is made. To address this question, I have uh, many different methods which I show in my current slides. For example, I can look at the mathematics. I, I look at how to apply the mathematics to explain how all this mathematical calculation inside the AI model. For example, for new level models, how the input data, they are weighted combined, how the nonlinear active functions they are applied, 
how the layered output will be fed into the next layer so that it can make more complicated output. I can rely on all the math to explain what happens inside this uh, uh, black box AI. Also, I can rely on many different visualization methods to help us to understand the data and attribute. I can use histograms to show the distributions of the, my input attribute and data to show whether it's a balanced data set or some imbalanced data set. I can use a box plot to show the mean and the variance for different types of attribute. I can use a scatter point to show the diversities of my input data. And lastly, I can use a line chart to show what is the trend of data over the time. I can make some forecasting. Okay. So this would be some typical visualization method to help us to understand the metrics behind the AI machine learning models. Okay. So all of these are quite useful to explain the model internal process. But how to explain model decision? I'll explain in the next slides. Okay. So now we can see, I want to explain the model decisions. Okay. So previously, the first question is ask yourself what is plan. So suppose my current focus will be explain the model decisions. Then the second question I need to ask myself is, is the model itself is explainable or not? If you recall the slides I showed before, I can summarize the existing AI system according to model interpretabilities and the model accuracies. But some models, they are already designed by themselves, very easier to explain. Suppose I'm very lucky to choose an easier model, very easier to explain. Okay. I'll give you two examples in these slides. First example, is linear regression. So we still use a loan approval, this is a use case to explain all the method. Okay. So when you submit a loan approval, basically you need to provide two informations. Okay. One is X1, okay, which is so-called your loan, your income. Another one is X2, which is so-called the loan request amount. So based on these two numbers, I can use linear regressions to figure out what is the risk for the AI system to approve or reject. According to this very simple formula, you can see every time you change, if you change your income, that means you change X1 in this formula, that will affect uh, additional W1 to your final decisions. Certainly W1 could be positive, could be negative, that depends on specific AI system. But from the formula, we can very clear to see the adjustment of the income, which is X1, will introduce additional W1 contribute to your final decisions. So you can see it's very clear to explain how the decision is made. Okay. The second example is decision trees. Decision trees is very nice machine learning models can be explained by itself. Okay. So the, according to this uh, decision model, it tells us Although in your applications, you tell me the income and the loan request amount, these two informations, but actually your income is more important. That's why the first rule I need to study is the income. Okay, that means the income will be my first rule to study. If your income is larger than a certain amount, go to the left, otherwise go to the right. The second rule is I will look at your loan request amount. Okay. So all of these decisions, they are be trained and provided by the decision tree models. So you can see from these slides, linear regression and the decision tree, they are the two very popular models which can be explained by itself. So it's easier to explain such models. Then you can argue, hey, how about those are complete model? I'm, I'm more interested in neural networks, yeah? particularly the some deep learning. Uh, they are very difficult to explain. How about those are black box models? Okay. Then that would be my next questions. Do you need this is the one method apply for all the models or do you want to have some specific method to explain specific models? So let's look at the model agnostics explanation first. Okay. So for the model agnostic method, we also can further provide a two method, which is a global explanation and the local explanation. I will show in the current slides and next slides. So don't worry, I will tell you the difference between these two. 
For the global explanation, that means the method will explain all my input attribute and data globally. So basically tell us what is the input attribute, what is the not input attribute. Okay. If we still look at the loan approval, okay, loan approval, okay. So in this case, in a loan request, you need to give me an attribute. For example, X1, first attribute will be an income. Second attribute, X2 will be the loan amount. The X3 will be working experience. X4 will be family members, income, all these things. Totally, you give me the N. To answer which attribute will contribute more to AI decisions, the intuitions behind this method will be every time you will select and choose one single attribute only, such as X3, which is the working experience, then for the rest data, you don't need to change all the rest data. You only do some shuffling, basically a random shuffling for your selected attribute, which is the X3 in my current slides. Okay. Then after that, for your manipulated data, you apply the same AI model, which is the same AI model, to make decision for your manipulated data. So here I need to clarify, oh, AI model is never changed, still the same AI model, but your data is changed. But inside your data, only your selected attribute is changed. All the rest attribute, no change. Okay. The idea is if your selected attribute is very important, then if you apply the same AI system on your manipulated data, then your system will perform very bad your model performance will drop significantly because the attribute is important, but you do the random shuffling. So on the other hand, if this attribute is not important, then you apply the same models, the model performs still very good because it's not important. Right? So following these ideas, we need to do this random shuffling for each individual attribute to study whether it's important or not important. But certainly you can argue that, oh, this, this method only look at individual, uh, individual attribute. Sometimes or the different attributes, they work together. There are some correlations. Then how to address this? Don't worry. So we have uh, another method to try different combinations. Okay. You look at your housing price, right? You want to sell your HDB, your condo. How, so how to do the price evaluations? You need to take a look whether, uh, how is the locations near to national park or not? How is the size, room size, high floor, low floor? Do you have any pet facilities nearby? You try different combinations instead of the individual attribute in my left figures. So both of these two can help us to understand global explanations. So the global explanation means can tell us which attribute is more important, which attribute is not important. But sometimes you might be also interested for your specific loan request. You submit the loan request to a certain bank. The bank reject your loan. You want to ask, you want to appeal. Why, why your loan approval, your loan request is rejected. What you need to do? Do you need to increase your loan, uh, increase your income? Do you need to reduce your loan request amount? To address these questions, we need another model agnostic method, which is so-called the local explanation method, which I show in my next slides. So as you can see from the name, this method is a local explanation. The local means only explain your specific loan request. Okay. For example, you can see my slides. Okay. Uh, suppose I already built the AI model based on your X, which is the income. Okay. At the same time, I want to predict the model output, which is the Y, which is the risk. I build this very nice AI model, which I show in my blue line, my current slides. Then you submit your own loan request, which is the pink dot in my, in my slides. For your pink dot, you want to study how your loan request can be approved or rejected. So how to do this? So basically for your specific loan request, which is the pink dot, you need to do another manipulations to get some manipulated data by adjusting your income. For example, you add 2K, 3K, you can further in decrease minus 1K on the 2K. Then after that, based on this manipulated data, which are manually 
manipulate according to your specific loan request. You apply the existing AI models, which can provide you some decisions. So based on the decisions and your manipulated data, these are the pairs of information. You can build a simple model, such as a linear model to explain the relationship between your manipulated data and your model decisions. So by it's a simple model, because it's a linear model can be explained by itself. Right? So I'm able to explain for your specific loan request, whether it could be approved, whether it could be rejected. So in summary, this method can be summarized in my uh, in this uh, black color the box. Okay, so the the process will be given a data points you want to explain, which is a specific loan request. You do some sample nearby. You can fit some linear model or other simple interpretable models. After that, you can interpret and explain these linear models. So that's why we call these the local explanations. You can see from these slides and the previous slides, so both these are global and the local explanations, they are model agnostic. That means it can be applied for any different type of AI models. But sometimes you might be also increased for specific AI systems. That means what you need is model specific method to explain your specific AI systems. For example, in my computer vision domains, Usually we apply the CN, which is the convolutionary neural networks to do some image recognitions. Based on the photo shown in my shown in my slides, you can see for these photos, the AI system will tell me, oh, this is the uncle. He is standing, then he's playing the game. Then you can ask, hey, why? Why is the uncle is not the lady or is not the children? Why is standing, not sitting and running? Why is he playing the game, not drinking some coffees? So for such a specific method, we are able to apply some methods such as inverse propagations to explain for every pixel in these photos, what is the contribution for this specific pixel to your final decisions. After that, I can visualize this contribution as a heap map. So in heap map, I use different colors. Red color indicate higher contribution. The blue color indicate the lower contribution. For example, according to the heat map, I can see for the uh, for the uncles to recognize uncles, this region of pixels contribute more to recognize this uncle. Okay, uh, then uh, this another different region to contribute more to recognize uh, this is a gaming machine. Okay, not the not the coffee machine. <laughs> right. So in summary, this is the pipeline I want to share in my first part. Okay. In order to add on the XCI to your existing AI system, I suggest you follow this pipeline to study whether you want to explain the model decision, whether the model itself can be explainable, or whether you need a method agnostic or method specific. But certainly, the AI system is very complicated. The XCI actually can contribute in all different component of AI pipeline cycles. For example, in the training data, you know, in the model training, okay, I can I can see I can see how to do the visualization for training data. Okay. I can do the QA, I can evaluate the model, you know, how is the performance? Okay, I can monitor how you deploy the model, right? Deploy the model using the different uh, different solution, cloud or edge. Okay, I can do the prediction so I can explain the decision to the users. I can do the A-B test to compare different models to justify why I choose model A, not the model B. I can do the monitoring for my model performance to make sure the model performance is consistent after my deployment. I even can do some debugging to, to find some bug, you know, so that I can improve the model accuracy. So all these will be provide feedback controls to help my machine learning model building. But certainly this, this for this part, we will not talk too much for today, right? So we focus on the model decision explanations, which I show in my previous slides. So that will be the pipeline I want to show you. <clears throat> okay, I think that this is all for my first part. My first part, experiment AI. So the key message for the first part is to share with you the pipeline in my previous slides how to do XCI for your existing AI systems. So now let's move on to the second part, 
which are AR ASICs. So for this part, the slides is prepared by our colleague, Dr. Brian Ong. Okay. He just has a new baby yesterday. So we congratulate him. Um, so that's why he cannot be here today. So I help him to present his part. Okay. Uh, if you have any question, you, know, uh, you can feel free to, to contact him offline. Okay. So in the next part, we talk about AI ethics. So basically we'll talk a few different considerations, ethical considerations in different aspects of AI system, particularly uh, model building, model development, and the model deployment. In the model building, we talk about a few SQL data collection considerations. In the model development, we talk about what is the bias in the model deployment. In the model development, then how to eliminate the bias and ensure the fairness of the AI model development. After that, if I deploy the AI, we also need to look at some different SQL considerations for the AI model deployment. Let's look at the model building first. Like model building. So in the model building, I think all of us know the data collection is the key component in the model buildings. So inside the data collections, so the collected data must get some consent from the subject. And the subject, which are all of us, you know, when we do the when we contribute our personal healthcare data to do some AI medical system. So the, the subject should be aware of it. Then the subject should be have the option to opt in and opt out, and has the trust that the data can be deleted after a certain time. That means after the system development stage. Also, the subject should be have very clear understanding the usage of data. What is usage of data? So what system need to be built by using such a data? Okay. Also, the subject should be very clear on the whole process and understand what is the data management and control. So who can access the data storage? Who can access the historical data? Who can manipulate the data? Who can share the data? Let me give you examples to explain this, uh, this concept. So you know this whole week, we do this digital academic launching ceremony virtually online. So it's nice to see you uh, virtually online. So imagine if we do all this ceremony in face-to-face -face mode, which is offline. That means all the participants will come to our nice NUS ISS buildings. Then definitely for these ceremonies, you can attend different talks, seminars. Then inside the ceremony, we will have some photo takings and video recordings. So when we do such photo taking and video recordings, we need to clearly tell all you to get the consent from all you to clear your data. So you will be the subject which are be taking photos, then you should have the option to opt in and opt out. That means you can see no, yeah, you don't want to your photo can be collected. Right? Also, as a event organizers, we need to clearly explain what is the usage of this data. Whether it's be used some promotion videos, we can share the data in the social networks, in a in a Facebook, LinkedIn to promote the training course in digital academy, or whether you can use some these photo data to do some internal development for some AI system development. Then also the event organizer need to clearly mention, explain to you the data management rules. So who, which staffs are able to access the staff, uh, uh, access the data. So which staffs are able to manipulate the data. For example, add on some nice logo between, uh, beside your face, then share this uh, you know, nice manipulated photo in the Facebook. So all this need to be very clear explained to you, to all the users. So this is a few uh, ethical considerations for the data collections in the model buildings. Okay. Next for the model development. So in the model development, the bias sometimes also happens. That means the AI model and algorithms discriminate against certain groups. So it cannot produce desirable outcomes and cannot provide a fair assessment and judgment. Okay. So let me give you another example. If you want to apply the AI to do some predictive maintenance for your facilities, you are managing the facility for many different lift and outcomes in different residential house, a different shopping malls and facility management. Right? So you need to collect some IoT sensory data to do such AI systems. 
So the bias of the AI model, that means your AI model might have some bias for certain brand. For example, for this brand icon, it's always, oh, this icon is very bad, need more pettiness. So this is one example for the bias of the AI model scheme. So this bias usually can be detected at the output stage, which so-called the AI system decisions. But the question is, is the bias introduced at the upper stage or could be introduced at an earlier stage? So for this question, I think the answer is very clear. It's, it's introduced at earlier stage. So this is due to these are four key issues in the bias of data before you do the model development. First one, human bias. Human bias, that means decision makers and stakeholders, they may influence data collections during the problem framing stage. When you collect all the data for your accounts, you might have the bias to trust your domestic brand and some, and some bias, that means you don't trust those overseas international brand. So this due to the human bias. Second, sampling bias. That means the data collected are not representative of the demographics and the populations and the lack some diversities. So by right, you should collect all the data from all the account 24 by sevens and uh, including all the residential halls and the commercial office. But you might have a sampling bias to collect more for the commercial office and less on the residential house because usually commercial office, you know, they pay you more to do the maintenance contract. This is due to the sampling bias. The data is not rep representative for the demographics. Next one, precedence price. That means the data collected is not updated. You collect data last year. You based on last year data, you do the development for this year. Okay. Then you didn't aware that actually some certain outcome models, they change the spare component suppliers. So the model is not updated to address all these issues. Okay. Lastly, technical bias. That means due to the equipment used to collect the data, there might be some inherent limitations to do the data collections. For example, if you use multiple sensors to collect data, some sensors have more sampling rate, give you more data. Some sensors have less sampling rate, give you less data. This will cause a balance issue for data collection. So how to address all the four different types of bias in the data? Actually, they can be addressed in my next slide. Okay. To reduce the human bias, we need to make sure the data collection they are accurate. We need to address accuracy issues. To make sure the data collected is accurate, there's no calibration mistake, then all the subjects are aware of the, the process. We need to look at the completeness. That means the data collected should be representative and of the populations, and they are very uh, diverse and uh, comprehensive. Okay. To reduce the precedence bias, we need to look at the validity of the data to make sure the data is up to date and the re still relevant to our today's context. Lastly, to address the technical bias, we need to look at data source. So make sure the data from the trusted source. If it's from the external source, then I hope you have expert in your own organizations to do all these data quality checkings. So if there's a bias, the data collection, then I still use this bias data to do the data collection. So what happens? That means that something, something will go wrong, right? <laughs> so what happens? Okay. So according to these newspapers, so in the New Zealand, they do this the uh, AI, they deploy the AI to do the photo quality checking to check all the passport photo quality when you, when you upload your photo to apply the passport. Then somehow for this photo, uh, uh, for this photo, the AI system say, oh, you, you better open your eye, you better. <laughs> so this might be due to the bias for the data collection. You know? uh, they have more data for certain visual people. Uh, they tend to have some big eyes. You know? I think in Singapore, we, uh, we also have the, uh, we, we also need to upload the photo so that uh, we, uh, we, 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 we apply the passport, but I'm not sure whether you have an AI system to do the photo taking. <laughs> okay, this one I'm not sure, okay. So then how to address it? If you know there's some bias, so how to address it? So fortunately, we, we can apply the AI to address the bias issue of the AI. Okay, so because the AI is a double-side sword, you know? 
with the, that some buyers also can apply the AI to address this. Okay. So in the uh, newspaper, some big players, they already, uh, already started to apply the AI to address the bias in the speech recognition in the facial recognitions. Okay. So this will be some, some open questions. Okay. So is it easier to fix bias in AI? Is the understanding or the knowledge always available? So if we need to collect the data from the large diverse group, so how is it be the good sampling rate for us to, to deploy? So is it fairness of bias be subjective or objective? So how do we quantitatively measure the fairness of bias? But all these are open questions. Okay? If you have some sort, some answer, you know, you can feel free to post in the chat. Okay. Okay. Lastly, we look at the model deployment. After we deploy the AI system, you know, we also uh, need to address these a few SQL considerations. If we deploy such autonomous drive cars, if something is wrong, right? If some incident happens, so who need to take these responsibilities? So all of us know there are some limits for AI system, but do we still trust the AI system to promote this innovation in these areas? Then if we don't do this, what shall we do? Okay. Then is it possible to trace back the root cause of all these failures so I can go back, so I can uh, make my AI model system more robust okay, and more reliable. Fortunately, the Singapore is already the pioneer in these areas. So our government has already set up some uh, initiatives to make sure this uh, SQ usage of AI. We have a new council set up to make sure this SQL user AI and the data in these uh, different industry applications. For MES, we also set up this uh, principle to promote the fairness, transparency of the user artificial intelligence and data analytics in the financial sectors. Okay. And lastly, I want to share with you these three laws of robotics, which are quoted from science fictions. Although they apply for the robotics, I think it still can be applied for our AI systems. Okay. So the first law, a robot, that means the AI systems, okay, this may not injure a human being through by inactions, allow a human being to come to harm. Okay. The second law, a robot may obey the orders given it by the human beings, except such order will conflict with the first law. Okay. Lastly, a robot might protect its own existence as long as such protection doesn't conflict with the first and second law. Okay, so this will be some open discussion I provide to you. Okay, uh, so to what extent can these uh, three laws can be achieved, and how far away from its goals? Okay, so this will be my summary for my uh, second part. Okay, so in summary, so in the past one hours, I share with you these two important topics. First one, explainable AI. Second one, uh, AI ethic. Okay, for the XAI, basically I want to convince you the XAI can benefit different user roles. Okay, you can check what is a role in your own organizations and understand how you can get benefit from XAI. And also more importantly, I share with you the pipeline to add on the XAI for AI system. So basically you need to answer is the three question. First one, what do you need to explain? You want to explain model decisions. You want to explain model internal process. Second, is your AI model itself is explainable or not? Then you can choose different ways to explain. Lastly, if your model itself is very complicated, do you need a method agnostic models or do you need some method specific models to explain your AI systems? So this will be the pipeline I want to share with you in the first part, okay. For the second part, okay, so that would be the AI ethic, right? So I share with you a few key considerations in the model buildings, model trainings, and the model development. So when we build the model, we need to make sure and the element uh, to, to eliminate the bias of all these data and make sure it's a fairness to apply this model for different users and different data. Okay, I think that's all for my talk today. If you have some further uh, questions, uh, you can feel free to contact me through by this email. Okay. Okay. Now I can uh, I can look at the the chat to to answer a few questions. We I think we have a few more minutes, uh, so I can look at the question. <clears throat> you can feel free to post your question into the into the Q and A chat.
Okay, question one. Okay, question one. Is this a very interesting? Uh, the question one is how a stakeholders who might not be familiar with all the formulas and algorithms to understand decisions in the layman terms, in the layman terms, such as the product owners and management. Okay, if you recall the pipeline I share with you in my first part, okay, in my first part, there are some explainable methods I show you. Okay, for example, okay, for example, those are global methods, global maximum method. I can apply certain tools. I just treat it. This XAI as a tool, based on the tool, it can tell the product owners, so which attribute is more important. Okay. You are the insurance product owners, so the XAI tool itself can tell you, when you design the new product for the insurance, you need to think more about certain attribute and features, such as is a benefit, you know, the terms, all these things. Okay. You don't need to apply the math itself. XAI is already a tool. There are some existing tools available okay, to tell you the standard decisions. Okay. The second method, if you remember from my slides, the local explanation method, right? So in that slide, I show you a specific examples. Okay. You submit your loan request, then the XAI will tell you based on this loan request, so what be the chance to approve your loan? Then to further improve your chance, you better need to do some change on some records, such as increase your some salary, you know, uh, reduce certain uh, certain low request amount. Okay. So for all these informations are can be provided by the XEI to the stakeholders who do not have too much professional knowledge, particularly in math. You know, algorithms. So I think they'll be very useful to explain these AI system decisions to such group of these, uh, stakeholders. Yeah. Okay, the next examples, uh, the next session, the example so far we have is from the Western, you know, from the Western uh, context. So is there any example of the bias user AI in the Asian and the Singapore context? Okay. Uh, yes, there are some examples. <laughs> yeah, some examples, you can, you can look at the, uh, look at some uh, news. Okay, I can share you one example uh, uh, in the newspaper, you need, uh, in, Okay, so this this example is okay. It's it's released in newspaper, so it's not confidential. Okay, so that means in the Asian country, you know, not in Singapore, in one of the Asian country, uh, they deploy this is the uh, surveillance cameras to look at the traffic, traffic and transportation monitoring. So basically, they want to look at who cross the road, okay, cross the zebra line on the road when the right light is on. Okay, so if that case happens, the AI system will catch this human because who break this uh, traffic rule, cross this zebra line. Okay. Then due to this is the bias of the, the AI systems, the, they cannot differentiate, cannot differentiate a real human and a human, human poster. So as in, they realize that the one bus is a public bus. The bus, the, the bus stop at the roadside, but on the bus, there is a poster, an advertisement poster. On the poster, there is a lady face. Okay. Then the AI systems wrongly misinterpret this the human face as the real person to break these rules. Okay, so this is the one, uh, this is the one examples, this one examples uh, about this is some bias and ethical use. There are another example, I think you might read from newspaper, some, some APP, right? Some APP, after you install the APP, they require you access your photo album in your phone. Actually, after that, they will, you know, they get all these uh, photo data from the phone. They do some illegal things. So these are some uh, examples in the Asian context. Yeah. If you read newspaper, you can see more. <laughs> but certainly, we, we have more good and positive things about it. Yes, you know? so, uh, so don't feel disappointed by all these you know, illegal and ethical usage of ESC systems. OK, I think uh, there's, no, there's no more question, right?
Okay, that's a one more question. I think I can quickly answer the question. The question three, the explanation of AI is to end users is the XAI is a process of framework or common approach to guide the development of AI product. It's a both. The answer is a yes, it's a both. If you remember from my slides, after I explained the mod AI decisions, I show you XAI can be applied on all the components in the AI system development, including the model training, data collections, performance evaluations, performance monitoring, and some model debugging. So it's a one, uh, it can be embedded into all process. But today we focus on explaining the model decision. But if you are the data scientist and the developer like me, you can apply the AI in all the process of AI systems. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all for today. I have already answered all the three questions posed in the chat.